Ask anyone where the world's largest cross is, and they'll probably answer Christ the Redeemer in Brazil. But there's actually a much less famous cross that's four times taller. It's located in Valle de los Caídos, or Valley of the Fallen, in the town of El Escorial, just outside Madrid, Spain. It remains one of the most controversial and divisive topics among Spaniards. To better understand, let's take a look at the history of how it came into being. In the years leading up to World War II, Spain was in the midst of its own civil war, which started when the nationalists, aided by fascist Italy and Nazi Germany, led a revolt against the Republican-controlled government of Spain. Estimates claim that anywhere between 500,000 and 1 million people died as a result of the war. The nationalists were led by General Francisco Franco, who assumed the role of Spain's leader after the nationalist victory in the war. This period in the country's history is called Francoist Spain, a time known for totalitarianism, forced labor, concentration camps, and the repression of political opponents and opposing ideas, all with Franco at the head of it. Construction on the cross began in 1939, the same year the war ended. Franco claimed that the structure would symbolize, quote, a national act of atonement, a talking point that even his modern-day supporters will echo. Others view it as sort of a political shrine for Franco to boast about his victory. Despite the call for atonement, thousands of political prisoners from the opposing side were forced to work on this monument during its construction. Below the cross itself is a large basilica carved into the granite of the mountain, and it's truly massive, being larger than even St. Peter's Basilica in Rome. Inside, there's an 860-foot-long hallway, which contains six chapels. Given all this extravagance, it's probably not surprising that it took almost two decades to build. Once construction was completed, the regime decided that the monument should serve as a burial site to honor the fallen soldiers of the war. So they had anywhere between 30 and 40,000 bodies of soldiers from both sides dug up without their family's knowledge or consent and moved to Valle de los Caídos where they remain today. Francisco Franco would go on to rule Spain for 36 years until his death in 1975. Franco had always insisted that he wanted to be buried in the Almudena Cathedral in Madrid. However, upon his death, the government denied this action, and instead decided that he would be buried in Valle de los Caídos, making him the only person buried there who did not die in the war. As he was viewed as a dictator, no leaders of European countries came to his funeral. However, it was attended by Chilean dictator Augusto Pinochet and American Vice President Nelson Rockefeller. In recent years, some families have successfully lobbied to have the remains of their loved ones removed and placed somewhere more appropriate. Previously, anyone was able to come inside and visit Franco's grave, where they would usually find it adorned with flowers from his supporters. That is, until 2019, when the government decided to have his body exhumed as a sign of respect to the victims of the war. Franco's family insisted his remains be placed in the Almudena Cathedral like he originally intended, but the government disagreed and instead had him placed in a cemetery next to the burial site of his wife, claiming he deserved no sort of glorification. Today, Valle de los Caídos remains open to the public, and anyone willing to pay 9 euros can come see the world's largest cross and pay their respects to those who perished in the war. A word of warning though, if all of Franco's actions make you a little uneasy, avoid visiting on November 20th, the anniversary of Franco's death, when hordes of his sympathizers and supporters will descend upon the monument to celebrate the former dictator.